That movie guy, okay. We all know sophomore movies can be difficult. They are hot topics in most discourses of cinema. You can either turn out to be a Richard Kelly or you can turn out to be an Ari Aster. It's all up to you. And obviously, we kind of know where we want Robert Eggers to go down the road of. The director of The Witch has brought us his next film, The Lighthouse. It was one of the hot tickets at Cannes this year. It did very well at Kinzan and Director's Fortnight. It won the top prize, longest queues at the festival, along with Quentin Tarantino once upon a time in Hollywood. So you know that there is a good stance and a good foundation for this film. The reviews were insane. And obviously the hype train grows and grows. It's now going across festivals, across Europe, across America, everywhere. People are seeing this and it seems kind of unanimous. Um, but the question is, is it that good? We're here to talk about it. With The Lighthouse, I'm not going to go into a plot or anything like that. All you need to know that is a haunting story of two men working and living in a lighthouse on an island in New England in the 1890s. That's all you need to know. And trust me, don't go down the road of spoilers with this. Just go for the ride and the journey. It is totally worth it. The Lighthouse is the work of a maniacal genius and it is darkly malevolent. It has a very sordid, very interesting intentions and it's crafted wonderfully by Robert Eggers and his team. The authenticity of this film is what sucks you into this world. From the dialect, to the clothing, to the ratio of the film, to the score, just to the way that this monochrome look just works throughout the whole film. It is a beautiful process of cinema and Eggers just shows how he can be a future master of this craft and I use this in the heaviest of terms. If he continues like this, he will be one of the most well-regarded directors of the 21st century. I have no question of a doubt after seeing The Lighthouse. Robert Pattinson and Willem Dafoe provide a clash of the titans in this film. They have two very different ways of method acting, while Dafoe is well trained in rehearsal, Patterson isn't always the same, he just goes off cuff and provides a bit more shock and surprises, just like he did in The King. But what I enjoyed about them is that there is a weird camaraderie at times, we can grow to hate them, we can grow to love them, there's beautiful farts throughout this whole film, so, you know, it's it's a comedy, kind of. But just the way that they combine, but at the same time their separation from each other, gives this staple of distance and loneliness and solitude. It works itself into this frenzy of rage that's brooding on this rock, and you just don't necessarily know where the road is going to take you and Defoe nor Patterson kind of give you any hints or clues. We're living in the moment with them and we're ready to be shocked. One thing that you will find intriguing about The Lighthouse is its dialogue. It is of a <laughs> sea shanty kind of dialect. Sea Captain style in The Simpsons is one of the easiest ways to describe it. It takes a couple of minutes for you to adjust to what they're saying. Um, I've heard some people saying they should have subs, I disagree, go in, just get stuck into what they're saying. I think out of the both of them, I love Defoe's delivery of the script. I love his voice. There is just so much, there is so much more coming from him. While I do believe Patterson gives a great performance, as always, Defoe does slightly steal the show for me and that's very difficult for me for somebody that is a Patterson fan but I I just love the chemistry but without this amazing dialogue from Robert Eggers and his brother there just wouldn't be this unique experience and it's just a joy to listen to even if you just listen to this as like audio it'd be a very interesting like radio play I think but Hey -ho. The Lighthouse also is darkly photogenic. 
a lot of the imagery will be etched in your brain for decades to come. There is just so much to witness. It is a visual splendor of a movie to see. I wouldn't say at times that it's one of these movies that you're going to revisit very frequently, but I think every time that you'll go back to see The Lighthouse, it's going to be a very special watch. And I do think that it's going to stick with me for a long time. It's definitely, definitely one of the better films of 2019. It's like, it's like the jam filling of this whole cinematic year. It's been a freaking dud, as I've said in quite a few of my reviews, but this, along with Marriage Story, Parasite, Emma, a few more, The Lighthouse is definitely one of the best movies of 2019 and probably one of the best movies of the decade, one of the best movies of the 21st century. Easy enough to say. Obviously, like I said, I didn't really want to give you a very detailed review. I just want to give you more of an overview of the film. I don't really want um, to ruin anything um, of this film because I just wanted to go see it. And I know a lot of people are ready to go and see it, but once it hits your cinemas or your film festivals, freaking do it because it is a true wonder to see and to witness on a big screen. Obviously, all my details below if you want to contact me via Letterbox, Instagram. Comment section is open. Like, dislike, share. Do whatever you want. Subscribe and subscribe. Um, I'm, I'm here for the long haul. So it's all good. And like as we say on this channel normally, the Othanko, Obrigado, Merci beaucoup, Arigato, Dankeschön, Bishop, all the shuns. And obviously, never change. LFF reviews coming soon. Bye.